Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. Today is 34th, 32nd in the series, and today we're going to speak about in detail about cross currency interest rate swap, where we will cover the different parts of cross currency interest rate swap, which is principal only swap and coupon only swap. Coupon only swap. Well, from this side, I'm Rahul Madan, working as a corporate treasurer in EXS Services, which is an Indian counterpart of the US Nasdaq district firm. At the same time, I'm also also acting as a treasury trader and business consultant for various forums across the world, and also acting as a virtual treasurer for various companies in India. I'm also a speaker in almost 26 global forums across the world, and you're welcome to visit my foreign for, for, you are welcome to visit my foreign exchange academies, title foreign exchange Daily Thinkers, and LinkedIn, YouTube, and Daily Motion. This covers 26 and uh, 2100 global members. This covers the 30 technical videos so as the daily motion. You're welcome to contact me at 9899242978 or rahulmogan8 and at gmail.com. Once again, I'm stressing the fact that we're going to speak about a beautiful topic which is known as cross currency interest rate swap, which is nothing but some of principal only swap and coupon only swap. What do you mean by cross currency interest rate swap? We are going to cover an example of cross currency interest rate swap with an example of Infosys. Some books would also have a cross cross currency interest rate swap as CCS, which is nothing which is nothing but cross currency swap. Cross currency interest rate swap is nothing but POS plus plus COS. POS is nothing but principal only swap. And COS stands for coupon only swap. And CCRI stands for cross currency interest rate swap. Today we are going to take an example of how cross currency interest rate swaps are working. Take a very simple example. Infosys would like to take a $1 billion of a loan in the books to make a training center in Mumbai. And Infosys would like to take a billion dollar loan. Now there are two ways Infosys can take a loan. One way is ECB, external commercial borrowing. Second is taken by foreign currency non-resident bonds or foreign currency non-resident deposits. And today we are going to cover, we are going to cover an example of often ECB which is external commercial borrowing. So Infosys is taking a one billion loan from ECB and assuming the party who is lending to Infosys, this is JP Morgan US. Now, one the, because the fund have to come in India, the fund will come by an Indian way, which is known as JP Morgan India. Now, JP Morgan India, I assume in this example that JP Morgan India would act as an LLN party. JP Morgan India would act as an act as an uh, AD party, and JP Morgan India would act as a swap party. So, all the three would be same which is JP Morgan India. Now the structure go like this, Infosys is taking a $1 billion of loan from JP Morgan New York or JP Morgan US. The fund is coming to India via JP Morgan India, a billion dollar of a loan. And we are assuming that LNN party, AD party and swap party are both Infosys. Sorry, it says JP Morgan India. Now Infosys want to do a cross currency swap in this. Now in this we need to mention about the two critical thoughts that what if one is the book. Infosys, the loan of Infosys is in dollar. However, the Infosys functional currency which is in INR. So there is a cross currency fact which is USD to INR in Infosys. Now these cross currency fact can be further divided into two parts. This is the effect of revaluation and this is an effect of translation. Revaluation stands for conversion of foreign currency into local currency. On the other hand, translation stands for conversion of local currency into foreign currency. I'm again stressing the fact that conversion of dollar into INR stands revaluation. Conversion of INR into dollar stands translation. Translation happens during consolidation. Revaluation is something you are converting your foreign currency into local currency. Now, Infosys book is in INR, however, the loan taken by Infosys is in dollar. So, in that sense, Infosys is subject to this revaluation gain loss on this amount. So, if, take an example,
if Infosys is taking a billion dollar loan, so if Infosys, if the if USD INR would depreciate, INR would depreciate, then Infosys would be having revaluation losses, which I shortly term as revaluation losses, and if USD INR would have appreciate. Then Infosys would have reval gain. On the other hand, this is the loan amount, so I'm writing L. On the other hand, the existing AR in the books of Infosys would have like this. If USD INR would depreciate, then Infosys would have revaluation gain. And if USD INR would appreciate, then they have reval loss. So both are counter to each other, but Infosys do not want to, don't want to play with the revaluation. So what Infosys do, Infosys will do a technique which is known as POS. POS stands for principal only swan. I am again stressing the fact that we assume that the LRN, LRN stands for loan requisition number, AD, AD stands for authorized dealer and uh, swap. So I am trying for this which we are discussing. They all are Infosys India, so there is no other bank which is involved, uh, JP Morgan India, so there is no other bank which is involved. So it would go like this, Infosys would give $1 billion, this is on paper, actually this should, will not happen because Infosys will not cite dollars. Infosys will, and will give $1 billion to JP Morgan India and assuming the spot rate at that moment of time, USD INR stand at 62 per dollar. JP Morgan will give rupees 6200 crores to Infosys and assuming the loan taken assuming the loan taken by Infosys is dollar 1 billion taken for 10 years at L plus 150 basis point and after 10 years Infosys will return 6200 crores to JP Morgan India and the loan would settle. However, this is just like a selling contract, selling and buying. You are selling and you are selling on spot, you are, you are, you are buying in forward. So for that you have to pay, you have to pay, pay a forward premium which is no, which is nothing but INR LTF as for voters. So which is the forward premium on buy side divided by POS spot divided by the tenor. So take a simple example if the deal is of 10 year assuming the assuming the forward premium is this 40 and spot rate is 60 sorry it 40 rupees so 4000 pesa 60 divided by 10 so roughly how much So roughly 6.6% of interest Infosys will have to pay. So how it works, every year Infosys would pay 6.6% on rupees 6,200 6, crore of liability in the books. So I am again repeating the same thought that very first Infosys got a billion dollar, they don't want to take a revaluation risk in their books. So what they did, they want to, they want to remove the, uh, they want to remove the risk of revaluation in, in their books. So they, they decided not to cite the dollars. They got, they converted their dollar liability into INR liability for which they got the spot rate of 6200 crores and after end of 10 years they would have paid, they would pay this 6200 crores to bank and they will get their billion dollar back and no one would settle. However, since it is not a free transaction, it is just like selling on spot and buying it forward so they have to pay a 10 they have to pay a 10 year premium and for 10 year premium infosys will pay the forward premium of 10 year divided by pos pos spot stand for this 62 which i am talking about and divided by 10 so this is 6.6% of the pos spot infosys we have to pay another way of doing this is that another way of doing this this is the first way wherein you are paying the forward premium. Another way of doing this is that Infosys, which is on Reuters, Infosys would pay INR IRS, which is Indian Rupee Interest Rate Swap, 
which is equals to my4 and my4 is nothing but 1 plus swap and rise premium into 1 plus USD LIBOR. So this covers the both, the, the impact of swap and rise premium as well as the LIBOR. So it, it would, in the second way it would go like this, Infosys would pay INR IRS and would cite USD IRS. USD IRS stands for this part. So ultimately Infosys is paying the post rate. the forward premium rate and other sense I can say INR LTF premium or I would say the forward premium divided by POS spot divided by tenor. This is the total amount of premium which stands at 6.6%. This is all about principal only swap. And at the end of 10 years, Infosys would pay 6,200 crores to JP Morgan India and get their loans settled. However, please be note that like I earlier said, in this, Infosys is able to save himself from the fluctuation in, in their so-called principal and the currency movement. However, the interest rate is still open. They are still paying L plus 150 basis point to JP Morgan US every year. So on a 1 billion dollar of loan, assuming L for one year is 0.5, so that is roughly 2%, Infosys is supposed to pay $1.20 million per year to JP Morgan US. So they are safe from their principal perspective, but when it comes to interest, they are not safe, for which they, there is a term which is known as COS, which stands coupon only sir. Before to going ahead, I am again stressing the fact that Principal only swap refers to a structure wherein you you save yourself from from your principal. You save your principal, but not the interest rate. Example: You are converting your dollar liability into annual liability. However, the interest part is still open, which is this, which is coupon only swap. So in this, how this would happen, in the coupon only swap, there are two types. One is known as dollar coupon only swap, one is known as INR coupon only swap. And today we are going to cover only the dollar coupon only swap. We won't be covering the INR coupon only swap. So in dollar coupon only swap, the principal is saved. Now POS is done. Infosys would continue to pay L plus 150 basis point, say for six, say once in a year for a simplistic loan. And suppose L for the year is 0.5%. So the total return, total would be 2% for Infosys and dollar $1 billion stands at dollar $20 million for Infosys. So every year Infosys would pay dollar $20 million to JP Morgan India, sorry, JP Morgan US and they want to hedge that. In that JP Morgan US, in that sense, in coupon only swap, JP Morgan India would pay them L. So this LL stands cancelled, total turn out to be 105 basis point. Now 150 basis point would be the total liability in the books of Infosys plus the amount which they are because they are receiving LIBOR. So they have to hedge themselves fixedly which will pay USDRS. So the total liability in the books of Infosys would be 150 basis point plus USDRS. And assuming it's a 10 year USD IRS, so they would be paying 2.5%. I'm taking rough example, so 1.5% plus 2.5%, which is roughly 4% of the liability, which they have to pay. So the net liability in the books of Infosys would be POS plus COS. POS, we took at 6.6%, this is roughly 4%, so roughly 10.6% plus then impact, which is known as withholding tax. So which is roughly 11% or so. This is an hypothetical example. The net cost of uh, foreign currency borrowing is not more than 8.5% to 99%. But this is an end hypothetical example. I'm again stressing the fact that whenever you take any foreign currency liability, it is predominantly important for you to understand the fact that you have to hedge that and you should hedge this via that way. You should take principal only swap and coupon only swap. 
I'm again stressing the fact I'm again stressing the fact that that cross currency interest rate swap is divided into two parts which is principal only swap and coupon only swap principal only swap means principal is saved or hedged however interest is open coupon only swap means coupon is hedged or saved however principal is open and cross currency interest rate swap refers to this which is POS plus COS which is both principal and interest are hedged this is all about cross currency interest rate swap wherein you are converting your dollar liability into INR liability. We have one more kind of cross currency interest rate so I have wherein you are converting your INR liability into dollar, into dollar liability. Now please be note that this conversion of dollar liability into INR liability this may also known as a reverse dollarization. or cross currency interest rate swap and, and whatsoever. You're most welcome to contact me at 91. You're most welcome to contact me at uh, 91 9899242978. You're also welcome to contact me at Rahul Magan 8 gmail.com and you're welcome to join my LinkedIn networking which is foreign exchange maybe thinkers which is on LinkedIn YouTube and daily motion thank you very much thanks for your time and have a great evening as well